All righty. So uh, there is the wonderful, um, very wonderful human being, all around nice guy, um, who also on the side happens to be um, a very valued careers advisor, um, obviously with the careers team uh, at Macquarie University. Um, just very quickly before I um, before I forget, um, for GLP students, so that you can claim um, one of the careers codes, if you could please, because remember we just get a screenshot of before and after a careers event. If you could please just jump onto the chat, just write like hello or something, get a screenshot. That's going to be your first screenshot. And then or at the end, um, obviously, just as we're about to wrap up, as you just write like, thank you, goodbye or whatever, you'll get your second screenshot. And then that's going to be your evidence um, for claiming one of your career sessions. All righty. So if you want to just jump onto the chat and just write, you know, just write hello or whatever, um, get a screenshot just as your proof that you're here. Um, that similar thing at the end and then that'll be your evidence um that you're here and then obviously if you attend one more or if you've already attended one and this is your second one um you'll then be able to claim uh one of the careers codes 30a or 30b um to be specific um so without any further ado um given uh that um hopefully uh not an not an overdone introduction um but he really is genuinely a nice guy as he's about to uh, prove himself Without any further ado, Tyree, I uh, would love to hear from you, mate. Thanks so much, Francis. Uh, good afternoon, students. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, Francis, for the invitation. So yes, I'm Tyree. I'm a careers advisor here at Macquarie University. I'm just gonna pop a few uh, web addresses into the chat as I, as I talk just briefly here. So as the video alluded to, the best and the, and the first way to get a hold of any one of us or to see our resources is through Career Hub which is also now known as Employability Connect. So it's essentially the same thing. So what Career Hub or Employability Connect is, is that it's our gateway to our services. You can log in to Employability Connect and see our jobs, our job vacancies, especially if you are um, still uh, either doing your education degree or getting into your degree and you may want to um, maybe get some experience and maybe some tutoring or some other sort of part-time or casual work related to education, we have those jobs available. We also have resources on Employability Connect, such as um, write it, resume writing, uh, cover letter writing, um, interview prep, uh, job searching, um, and even some advice on career exploration and career planning. You know, especially if you're thinking, well, I want to do education, but I also have an interest in history or psychology or some other area. While we cannot help you determine if you can do a double major or a double degree, that's more of an academic question, we can at least assist you with mapping out career planning and what those additional um, career options might look like, but those additional degrees uh, were relevant. Attached to us, we also have a subservice called Macquarie University Student Employment Service, also known as MQSC. And what this essentially is, is that it's a uh, career service within a career service that assists you with finding uh, paid uh, full-time and part-time work as a student or as a graduate. So MQSC works as a recruitment agency for external and internal employers. Uh, they can assist you with being shortlisted for opportunities, a wide variety of which, including some, again, might be more along the tutoring or education side of things in case you need some experience or in case you're after uh, maybe confirmation that you're doing the right thing. Um, MQSC can also give you feedback uh, through their employer partners. If you're not successful for a role, they can help you to determine why through uh, that employer. And then finally, um, we've got a uh, a robust digital library that's got 24 seven access to any other careers advice and other career insight. It's called careerzone.mq.edu.au. Whoops, I left out the edu. Um, what careerzone is, is it's a digital library of resources. You would use the same login information, your one ID um, and your password. Uh, that you use for Employability Connect to get into um, Career Zone. And it could assist you with, there's my timer, it could assist you with anything. It's available 24 seven. It's also an app on your phone that you can download to uh, get you know assistance with anything you need uh, careers related. So we hope to see you either virtually or in person uh, for our service. Thank you, Francis, back over to you. My pleasure, thank you, Tyree. And of course, the other benefit of being able to hopefully have a chat with Tyree sometime, which I can assure you is an absolute delight as you've um, all just heard. Um, so without any further ado, the reason 
uh, why you are all here. There we go. Um, we have three wonderful school teachers. They are wonderful because they're just wonderful. Um, they're wonderful because they're school teachers. Um, and they're even more wonderful because they are GLP alumni, as I mentioned at the start, they are GLP alumni, as in they've completed the Global Leadership Program um, and they went on to become uh, school teachers, which in my humble opinion is the absolute best job in the world, um, which they're also going to mention too. So just as a prelude to this, um, all of you, as obviously I imagine most of you are GLP students, um, you've either absolutely decided that you would like to become school teachers, or at least something in education, um, or you're at least thinking about it. Uh, keep in mind that our three wonderful speakers here today um, were once in your very position. Okay, they were once going through GLP, they were once um, going through the degree at Macquarie University, and they're now essentially at the other end of that. So we're very grateful for them to be here. Um, hopefully they got something out of GLP. Um, I think they'll mention a little bit about that. Um, and then we'll obviously talk a bit, a bit about their time as school teachers. Um, so the three of them are going to speak essentially um, one by one. And then we're gonna throw it open to you for a bit of a conversation. We'd really love to hear from you. Ask anything. Um, that's why they're here. They're awesome. So without any further ado, um, Shanlina, who currently serves as a school teacher at Quakers Hill High School, um, would love to hear from you. The floor is yours. Thank you, Shanlina. Thank you, Francis. Hi, everyone. Uh, so my name's Shanlina, but you can call me Shani for short. Um, as Francis said, I uh, work at Quakers Hill High School, and this is my fourth year of teaching. So I graduated in 2018, I think. Uh, so basically with the questions, um, how did GLP assist me with my career? When I was at uni, I loved GLP. It was like the thing that I looked forward to most, um, even like in front of my studies. So with the 200 points that we had to um, get before graduating, I went past that because I love GLP so much and I got um, 500 points in experience because I just had so much fun doing everything. Uh, so with the different activities that I did, um, I tried to base them mostly around building different skills that would help me with becoming a teacher. So my um, favorite activity was joining the buddy program because it helps me to basically communicate with other people, uh, to present in front of like big audiences. Um, and later on in my university experience, um, I also became a buddy team leader. So that helped to develop leadership skills, planning, that kind of thing as well. Um, advice for my first year self in being a teacher is to be kind to myself because I am a little bit of a perfectionist, so I kind of always set a really high standard for myself. And if I didn't meet it, I was really harsh. And I just thought like, oh, if I can't do this, people are gonna look at me badly. I can't possibly be a good teacher. But after my first year of teaching, I learned it's not how it is. I need to take care of myself. I need to just take things slowly. Uh, so what I'd recommend to others, what I do now, um, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this properly, but I have something um, I use called a vitality wheel. It's totally not appearing on the camera. That's okay. Whatever. Um, so it's just like eight different categories of how to take care of yourself, which I pretty much just found on the internet. Uh, so for example, the first category is sleep, rest, relaxation, and breathing. So in that category, I just jot things down like eight hours of sleep per night or meditate every morning before going to work. Um, maybe later, Francis, I can send you a digital version of this vitality wheel just so it doesn't look like I'm speaking out of thin air. <laughs> uh, yeah, so first couple of years or first year of teaching, I really tried to keep that vitality wheel um, on my desk at home and also in my school diary. Just every time things got stressful, it was helpful to have um, easy methods of calming myself down. What I didn't expect with teaching, my first year, I was in a, a government school in a low SES area. And it was just a bit of a shock to me because it was quite different to the placements that I did during uni. And so I thought that everything that I dealt with as a first year teacher in kind of a difficult school was what I'd have to deal with every day for the rest of my life. So it was very stressful for me. 
Um, but after um, seeking out like counseling and taking care of myself, I started to keep a diary um, to reflect every week on good things that had happened at school. So by the end of my first year, the diary was full of things that were positive every week. Uh, advice that I'd like to give to future teachers is to build a network of other teachers uh, so that you can share resources because you don't have to create everything yourself because that's just not possible. And also to just have people who understand what you're going through as well. But in saying that, if you do have friends who are teachers, also try to keep a balance and don't always be in teacher mode because that will just wear you down. So I have friends from um, my previous school that I taught at. And when we do catch ups, we give ourselves a limit of five minutes each to talk about school related things. And then the rest of the time that we're together is social only because we, we need that fine line between. Um, and advice to find a job is during GLP, just participate in activities that um, will help you to build um, experience in working with children or to develop skills, like I mentioned earlier, with communication. But most importantly, just do things to have fun because the teaching will come later. For now, just focus on you. Um, yeah, that's it from me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chunlina. That was um, invaluable uh, to our to our students. So thank you very, very much. And just on the whole, just a very quick comment on that part about, you know, don't be on teacher mode all the time, um, you know, sort of get out of teacher mode. I remember um, not last season, but the season before um, we won the cricket grand final and we're out at a, um, just at a, a pub here in Canberra with the big trophy. And these guys came past and were like, oh, you know, you guys won a grand final on the premiership. So we started talking for a little bit. And one of the other guys mentioned, yeah, one of our team members is a school teacher. Um, so the guy, I guess which ones, the, like the guy like scanned the team. There was, you know, 15 of us in the team. He like scanned the team, looks at me and goes, you. So I don't know what it is, but there's something about, I hope so maybe you'll all give this off one day too. There's something about when you're a school teacher, you give off the teacher vibe, um, which is really, really cool. But yeah, um, just make sure that you're looking after yourself um, and no, don't always be in teacher mode because you definitely need to give yourself that headspace. That was wonderful. Thank you so much, Shanlina. Without any further ado, uh, Sherlyn, who is a teacher at Xavier College, would love to hear from you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. So I find this so funny because Shanlina graduated in 2018, but I actually started my degree in 2018 and I just finished up um, last year. So I'm pretty fresh in the education field. Um, I've been teaching English at Xavier College since the start of um, this year and the GLP has played a huge part in the way of which I was able to develop my skills. So in responding to how the GLP assisted with my current career, I would easily be able to say that the GLP helped me to develop both hard and those soft skills. So through the multitude of opportunities that were offered, I was able to build on my academic and professional goals. Um, there's so many opportunities, whether it's volunteering or participating in different units um, remotely or on campus. It was just really um, accommodating for any form of student. So depending on um, your availability, the GLP pretty much can assist you in any way, which I feel um, was so important because the GLP really created a safe environment where everyone was supported and it was really beneficial in my case to help develop my skills. Um, thinking back to what advice I would probably give my first year self, um, I think it was just to find good support. So I think um, I live in Western Sydney, so naturally I was always really tired traveling to campus. And so for me, it was a little bit of a drag in the beginning. It was just about survival, um, but I didn't want it to just be about survival. I wanted to actually enjoy my time and make the most about make the most of my university experience and so I started actually reaching out to people who I'd gone to school with or people who I knew would be on campus or had similar timetables and then I started getting them involved in the GLP and then we started kind of um, like mixing our timetables together so we would actually end up doing different activities together so if you find that maybe you're a bit anxious or it's a bit 
hard for you to get into the run of things with GLP or just in uni in general, I would definitely recommend um, finding a friend or, you know, like even participating in any GLP activities where it gives you the opportunity to actually network and make friends because it's, it's all about people. And, you know, if you're looking to get into the education world, like it's all about the people, it's all about networking and that's how it is these days. So my advice would be to network and to just create a great support system to support you in your own journey. Um, while I was a uni student, I was sometimes unsure and afraid of different things. Um, I think the biggest thing I was unsure and afraid of was just balancing my life. So I'm pretty sure at one point I had like three jobs, not full time or anything, but just three different jobs on top of university, on top of, you know, home and on top of just making sure that I had my own time and social life. And it was, it was a lot. So um, it did become a bit hard at times, but this kind of leads into what I would recommend for you guys if you find that you maybe struggle with balancing your life. But I guess being that I was involved in so many different things, including the GLP as well, it pretty much forced me to manage my time so effectively where, um, so Chenlina, she utilizes like her diary, which is fantastic. But unfortunately for me, I just, I struggled to just sit down and write. And so I had to find something that was more accommodating for my chaotic mind. And that just happened to be a digital calendar where I was able to create events, move them around, block out specific times. If I had an event at this time, I could block it out. I could add it. And it became a lot more convenient for me to be able to say, oh, okay, so I'm doing this on Monday. I'm doing this on Tuesday. And then making sure that I actually gave myself time, which usually was just in the form of, okay, you know what? I've had to do something on Monday. I've had to study on Tuesday, had an assignment due on Wednesday. Let me just take Thursday off. So whether that meant that I was at home in bed on Netflix all day, just blocking out that time and making sure that I had me time was really important. And that's something that I would really recommend because, you know, you want to prioritize your life, your work, um, your experiences at university, but you also want to prioritize your own health. Um, something I didn't expect to be a, fe a feature of my career before I started. This is an interesting one. I don't know if it's just because I have just started recently, but there is a lot of work that goes into being a teacher, a lot more than I already knew there was going to be. And it's not that it's harder, it's just like, I feel like a lot of people don't realize how much teachers do. And I think once you get into the groove of things, I figure it out. So one of the biggest challenges I had when I first started was that teachers always have something to do. So even when I was going home, I found myself on my laptop doing school things. And I was like, wait, no, it's 4 p.m. I'm at home. I should not be doing school things. So I think this pretty much gave me the opportunity to just figure out my work-life balance, which is just something that everyone, I guess, would have to figure out or pick up on the way. Um, but for sure, it's, it's definitely worth it. I figured out that work-life balance and I enjoy the work that I do. And I think for any teacher or for anyone in any kind of workforce, um, it's not really work if you love what you do. And I truly do love what I do. And I can assure that any teacher doesn't do teaching just for a specific reason. It's because they love it. And it's because, you know, it's a wonderful way to give back to the community, you know, to say thank you to your past teachers and things like that. Um, so if any of you are interested in a career in teaching, I would honestly, seriously encourage it. You know, you've all heard about the teacher shortage and the strikes, and you know that um, teachers do a lot of the hard work for students. It's, it's really incomparable. So it's a perfect way to give back, like I said. Um, and one way that you can work really well to, you know, kind of build your experience is to maybe work as a tutor or even join different mentoring programs. So during GLP, I was able to do three different forms of mentoring programs. One was in the education faculty alone. One was the Macquarie Buddy program. One was Elite Mentor. So there are so many different opportunities for you to actually participate and to really build your experiences. Um, and it builds on your skills as just like, you know, being a teacher and having those experiences with like-minded students or people as well. Um, 
So to help you best prepare or eventually find a job in the field, I would definitely say take on Tyree's, you know, all those website links, copy and paste them in your own notes. Because when I tell you I lived on the Career Hub, which is the Employability Connect, I literally mean every single day I was on that website, refreshing it, going through any internship opportunities, going through any casual job opportunities, going through anything that was available just so I could build my experiences and also network. Um, you know, even if you're not particularly interested in specific um, opportunities like work, you've got so many, um, what would you say, so many opportunities to build your resume or learn how to network or, you know, learn how to build your LinkedIn page, anything like that. So there are so many opportunities made available to you specifically through Macquarie. So I would just really encourage you to make the most of that. Thanks, Francis. Thank you so much, Chenlina. Sorry, I just realized that what I did was I was just about to take myself off uh, mute. And then this, there we go. I think that's, yep. um, there we go. Excellent. Um, I've become one of those stereotypical old people can't work um, technology. Um, Sherlyn, that was incredibly valuable. Um, very well detailed and incredibly valuable. Um, as you can see um, from Chenlina and then, just then, Sherlyn, there's something about school teachers. Um, they're able to communicate things uh, just so beautifully. It must be really wonderful being in your class, Sherlyn. Your students must be absolutely very lucky. As an English teacher, you must, um, you. oh no, genuinely, like it, mu it must be a real treat being in your classroom. And um, hopefully, I mean, hopefully you do, hopefully you don't get something like this. When I was teaching, so this was, it was then a year seven English class. She'd now been year nine. We're doing persuasive writing. So one and both Shenlina, Sherlin and Nadine, you'll absolutely know exactly the type of student I'm talking about. So the kind of the sassy, like as sassy as you get, um, year seven girl. So she decided to make her persuasive writing to be a letter to the principal to fire me, like to fire Mr. Ventura. And it has to be one of the most funniest things I have ever read in my life. I, I, like I gave it to the principal. The principal wrote a formal response. It was the funniest thing. And then I got to make fun of her, like basically, you know, every day after that because I didn't get fired. So I'm like, oh, you, you're not really that persuasive. So they're the sort of moments that um, as a school teacher, um, and as Sherlyn mentioned, it's a wonderful job. They're those kind of moments um, that you, like I, I cannot explain, like, what that feels like like how much it means when a student comes up and says thank you or when you can even just see a student who maybe particularly if they've doubted themselves or if there's a skill that they're trying to acquire which they've really been chipping away at and then they nail it or and i'm sure our three teachers have had this where a student it's almost like out of nowhere they'll do something like give a class presentation or submit an essay or just do something and you're just like that was unbelievable and you know it's because they've really put in effort, but it also has a lot to do um, with the effort you've put into them. There, there is no other feeling like it. Like there is really no other feeling like it. And it's just really something uh, very special for the reasons that Sherlyn has outlined. So thank you so much for that, Sherlyn. Um, Nadine, hopefully you're still with us. I wasn't sure if that pop, if you dropped off before, but Nadine, if you're still with us, uh, we would let, oh, you're there, beautiful. Um, we would love, so we heard from Sherlyn, who's straight out of uni, straight into teaching. So um, Nadine, um, I guess we could say he's an experienced <laughs> teacher who's still in, um, uh, obviously also a GLP alumni too. So Nadine, would love to hear from you. Thank you. Hi, nice to meet everyone. Uh, yeah, so I'm at the sort of opposite end, I guess. I, I graduated a long time ago. I graduated at Macquarie in 2003, 2002. Uh, so I've been teaching a while um, and I did my GLP when I did my master's. So that was more recently. Uh, so when I was doing my GLP, I was um, uh, studying graduate uh, certificate in, uh, sorry, a master's of educational leadership, that one was, and um, was already also working full time and, and also a mum. So um, my experience with GLP was probably a little bit different in how much time I had to offer. And uh, I guess it already taught me a little bit more about balancing my time as well, trying to balance all of those things. Um, I definitely think doing the GLP really broadened my um, understanding of uh, different perspectives. And it was really great to sort of remove myself from work and 
uh, and home to go into uni and meet different people and have, um, and though, I mean, it might be a bit different now after COVID, but just meeting people that were studying in Australia from all over the world and, and learning those different perspectives and life experiences. And that really sort of opened my mind to different things. Um, I'm currently working at Trinity Grammar, which is an IB school, so it's PYP, I'm a primary school teacher, um, and I think um, it sort of GLP helped me to sort of have that global mindset, and I think that is definitely something that's included in the IB program, that global, um, you know, mindset of uh, looking, looking abroad and thinking about the students' impact across the world um, as they move into, um, as they move through school and into their um, future lives, so uh, that has really helped me, I think, there. Um, also, uh, as the others have said, the uh, sort of tutoring and different things, I, I tutored with some refugee programs and different things like that. And um, again, I connected with people in Sydney who had very different life experiences to me. And I, I found that really rewarding as well. Um, probably something I wouldn't have done unless I did GLP. So that was really positive. Uh, first year self. Uh, First year uni self, I would tell myself to uh, just take time. Life's long, there's plenty of time for everything. Uh, I rushed into a course that I probably wasn't right for me, but I pushed through anyway for a while and that wasn't good. So, and then I changed courses eventually. So um, I think, yeah, there's, there's plenty of time in life to get things sorted. So um, be patient. Uh, first year teaching self, uh, yeah, balance, uh, keep balancing life and uh, try to look after yourself, I guess. It's, it, can, it can be a really hard time. Um, probably ask a lot of questions. Don't be scared to take on advice from other people, um, but also have confidence in yourself as well. Often as a first year teacher, um, everyone else around you has so much experience and, and you kind of feel like you don't quite have that, but the new insight and the new thinking actually is really positive as well. So uh, keep doing that. Um, so, it's crazy thinking back to uni. I used to be really quite shy. Um, I remember my first prac sitting and uh, had a, it was only a class of year two kids, you know, super scary. And um, I was too nervous to speak to the whole class at once. So I just went to each group individually. I was like, it's time to stop. It's time to stop. Um, and, you know, not very effective, but uh, it seems crazy now because I now teach uh, in what we call um, flexible personalized learning, FPL, uh, which is a sort of collaborative teaching environment. We've got a beautiful new classroom uh, that is uh, really big. And we have 75 boys in the room and three teachers and a teaching assistant um, so I can now very easily teach 75 boys without even blinking so uh, that's right. very different <laughs> to my first um, <laughs> introduction to teaching uh, so yeah I, I started quite scared of, of the whole thing I think and uh, but just confidence built as as the years went by um, so uh, I think again balancing life is really important I find it good for me to segment things into different times uh, that sometimes means I do work quite late at work uh, if I've got things to do then I just knuckle down and I do it at work um, and I try my hardest not to bring anything home um, I'm a solo parent as well so I have two boys at home um, and so when I'm at home I need to really give them as much time as I can so that that really works for me and equally when I was at uni doing my master's um, and I did some more study after that um, I'd go into uni and I'd do the uni work at uni and then I'd come home and have home and then go to work and have work so uh, that really helps me to balance my time out uh, before I started teaching I, I I've always wanted to be a teacher um, in some sort of some sort of way uh, and so I thought I'd love it and I still do love it um, this far in to my career uh, I think I'm at a point now where I, I started doing some leadership type roles, um, but I didn't love getting pulled from the classroom. Uh, I really love teaching. So I just, I think, want to continue to be a teacher. 
Um, and but I also want to keep learning and keep keep trying new things. So I continue to study. I continue to. Um, I'm considering doing research now, um, and I've done a few courses since you know my first one. So um, that's what keeps my mind going. Um, but just generally being a teacher, I think one of the things that I love most about it is that I just never stop learning. I think it's a career where you just keep growing um, from the time you start to the time you finish. I don't think you ever stop. Uh, learning about students, about growth, about, you know, student well-being and, and just how to help them as much as you can to grow in all aspects of their life. And um, and just seeing the impact of that year on year is, is incredibly rewarding. Um, and I definitely recommend it to anyone. Um, I do know that a lot of people do stop teaching early on. I know there's a lot of people leaving teaching at the moment. Um, and so that just sort of can show how incredibly difficult and challenging it can be. Um, but it's also very rewarding. So I think in terms of finding a job and sticking to it, I think uh, get in there. If you're in an internship um, or if you're doing your pracs and things like that, uh, lean in, ask questions, you know, be there to use your initiative and, and uh, do as much as you can in those roles to, to move towards a job. Um, and then also just keep remembering that there's plenty of years ahead. I think um, one of the first things, I went to the UK at, at one point in my career early on, and um, I just did some casual work for the first year that I was there. And um, even that, I'd recommend any new teachers, um, you know, full-time permanent is not the only type of job in education. Uh, in those casual positions, I learned so much because I was in and out of different people's classrooms. I could see things I loved. I could see things I didn't love. Uh, within school settings, I could see schools that really connected with me and, and my sort of perspective, perspectives on education and my beliefs on what, you know, I believe students can achieve and different things like that. And so um, it made me realise that I did definitely want a job, but I also wanted the school to, to meet me as well and be the right place for me. Um, there can definitely be schools that don't match your style and don't match your goals. And, and so I think just, yeah, keep looking, but remember that you have a lot to offer as well and, and you want that place to be a place where you really fit as well. Um, but yeah, that's about all. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nadine. I think the, the main sub, the thing that I got out of that was you are a living, and I, I mean this sincerely, you're literally a living, breathing superwoman. Oh. Um, genuinely, I mean, just when, when you were telling me or telling us about everything that you do, it really is just quite extraordinary. Um, so thank you. So, and and something else to add to that, so in addition to being a mom, looking after boys, um, studying extra, being a teacher, all the rest of it. Remember, this is, in fact, for the three of our wonderful speakers here today, they're actually... So when you hear about, oh, school teachers have all these holidays and just do nothing, like, trust me, it's not like that. Like, I can absolutely assure you. Um, I can guarantee that the three of them, maybe they're having just a bit of downtime at the moment, but I can guarantee during these holidays, they're going to be planning for next semester. They're going to be perhaps doing some marking. Um, maybe they have some faculty meetings, all that kind of thing. Um, so in addition to all of that, um, they're actually giving up their time um, on technically the first day of their um, holidays to be with us. So um, not just Nadine, um, but we've got three uh, three superstars here um, and we're very, very grateful. So thank you so much for that, uh, Nadine. Um, so with, uh, again, without any further ado, uh, I want to open it straight up to all of you, our wonderful Macquarie students, our budding school teachers, um, whether you're absolutely set on becoming a school teacher or whether it's something that you're just sort of thinking about um, you're all here for a reason. So, um, and if there's any other uh, incentive to jump in and ask a question, I promise you, I'll literally just keep on talking. Um, and you don't want that, I can assure you. So feel free just to jump, like we'll keep it, you know, it doesn't, it's, it doesn't have to be particularly formal, whatever you're most comfortable with, if you're more comfortable um, popping it in the chat. Otherwise, feel free just to take yourself off mute and jump in and ask a question. Um, so to our wonderful students, this floor is yours. Now it's yours. <laughs> and I'll just keep an eye on the chat. Um, so thank you to Sir, um, Please correct me if I mispronounce your name. Um, it's a matter of respect to be able to pronounce names correctly. And I want to do that. So please do correct me if I mispronounce your name. I believe it's Soraya. Um, Soraya asks, what education path did you guys take to get to teaching? 
uh, did you go into it straight away or was it something that you picked later? So just to repeat that. So what education path did you take um, to get to teaching? Um, did you go into it straight away um, or was it something that you picked later? So I guess for the, our three wonderful speakers, um, what was your journey to teaching basically? Thank you for that wonderful question, Saraya. I'll go first. Um, yeah. I, I started with early childhood education. So I knew I wanted to be in education. Um, and then I ended up changing to primary education. Uh, and then I went straight into teaching after that. So yeah. I can go next. So I was one of the few that was really lucky. I actually got um, into university early entry through the GLEP program, which is the Global Leadership Entry Learning Program Scheme. Um, and it was a Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Education secondary degree. Uh, I did the same degree as Sherlin, so the Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Education, um, and my major was in languages, Japanese. So forgot to mention I'm a Japanese teacher. <laughs> ah. Well, um, to you for being here today, domo arigato gozaimashita. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We might be able to nab you to come to teach at Corwell High in Canberra because we have Japanese too. Um, how wonderful you would be. And just as something different, like I didn't actually become a school teacher since I was 27. So um, it is something that some people go into. In fact, um, the guy who started the same time as I did at Corwell, we both entered together. He became, a, he was a maths teacher. Um, he was a university lecturer um, for however many years at UNSW. So um, and he was, you know, married and he had adult kids, like he was in his 50s or something. So come up, become a teacher at any time. But obviously, hopefully all of you become teachers sooner rather than later. Um, I think Lorraine, I can see Lorraine is preparing a, um, a question just as you do that, Lorraine. Uh, Rania, hopefully I pronounced your name correctly. Did you want to jump on and ask a question? And then I'll um, and then I'll um, and then I'll pose Lorraine's question. Hello. Yes. Um, can you hear me? We can hear you perfectly, Rania. Okay, so I have a question about the um, teacher's portfolio. I heard that when you apply for a job, you need to have a portfolio. Is that correct? Like a portfolio to show your hmm. work as in placement, what you have done as a teacher. Do I need that? Um, um, Sherilyn, I think you're the, oh, actually, yeah, you're going to jump in anyway. Perfect. We think alike. So you, cause you're the most recent. Yes, please jump yeah. in. So I was just going to say, based on my specific experience, what they say for now is usually when you're, um, completing your degree and then in your last two years, you'll be on prac. They usually say that you should teach on prac as if that is your interview or as if that is your application, because most of the time you end up being, um, recruited through your prac schools or through your connections but in saying if you would like to apply for other schools it's always good to have a specific portfolio but usually what happened with me particularly was when I was applying on from teachers.net or CEDP or any of those kinds of websites they usually just require your resume and then on your resume that is where you would put forth you know you've participated in the GLP program these are the different um, activities you participated in, um, these are your different skills, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not sure how it would have been for Chenlina and um, Nadine, but for me, it was just resume submit. Okay, cool. thank you. Um, another thing I want to ask, if that is okay to ask Please, you. Please, absolutely. Question. All right. I was a recent GLP student in this semester, but I had to cancel because I am a casual teacher myself doing tutoring and uni full-time. And so I couldn't balance things out. So now that I've done four units, I want to split up my last four units until the end of next semester. So that means I have more time. I want to see if it's possible to go back to GLP program. Is this possible for someone to go out and then come back in? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm get that's that's probably I'm guessing that's a question for me, Rania. So absolutely. Yeah. So what we'll do is um, I'll pop my email address in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. Flick me an email. Absolutely, yes, is the question. And you'll also be able to um, like we'll go back on your records, and if you did claim any points, attend any sessions, we'll be able to essentially reactivate that. So 
I'll oh, pop perfect. in my email. Um, just flick me an email and I'll look after you. Absolutely, yeah, Rania. Thank you. Can I have an, also like another meeting with you to discuss this further? Of course. Email? Absolutely. Oh, yep. You. Flick me an email oh, and we'll arrange your time. Um, right, I'll just I'm that, for email. Thank you so all. much. That's all oh, from me. Pleasure. Thank you, Rania. There's my email there. Um, so I think, Brian, you had your hand up. So what we'll do is um, we have a question from... So thank you so much, Sherlyn, for that. Just another quick bit of advice for what it's worth. Um, so all of you, uh, particularly those of you who are at the later end of your teaching degrees, um, might be... Like I had to, for my degree, um, develop a teaching portfolio um, this was at the ACU, Australian Catholic University, and they had this website that was just horrible to build your portfolio. So I just went and built a WordPress website um, and just had each of the teacher capabilities. Um, so you have graduate, I can't remember they were graduate, then there's another one, then highly accomplished and then expert. So basically you move across and become better. Um, essentially just a, we a website with each one of those teacher standards and each page essentially is your proof of teachers. So that's just another thing. And then um, if you are um, submitting for a panel interview or something like that, you can literally just give them a link and just say, hey, my whole portfolio is on this website, um, basically. So that's just another idea if that helps, depending on your um, degree. Um, so uh, Lorraine, um, to Nadine, when you taught in the UK, was it organised through uni or an affiliated body? Or did you move and organise casual employment directly? And then after that one, we'll jump over to you, Brian, because I know you had your hand up. Uh, no, I, it wasn't organised through uni. I, When I left uni, I went and taught in the country for two years first. I didn't have a permanent job coming out of uni, so I decided to move the country and live there for two years. Um, and so then when I was in the country in New South Wales, then I planned my trip to the UK and I joined an agency um, that helped me to get casual work. And then... Um, or oh, it might be different now, but once I was there, then I went for different, some interviews with, from the casual uh, agency sent, the agency sent me to the interviews, but then once I got the job, then I was directly employed with the school. Uh, so, and then I ended up staying in that school for four or so years. So, yeah. There you go. That would have been a wonderful experience. Thank you, Nadine. Um, Brian, please jump on. Uh, yep. Um, okay, so my question is to the teachers, um, and I just want to shout out Sherlyn because you were my, um, if you don't, I'm not sure if you remember, but you were my um, peer mentor at one point. I do remember, I do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, my question is, and this is, I, this is, I feel like this is kind of a convoluted question, so I'll try to like speed it up and not kind of go on a tangent, but I feel like with the recent events that have been happening, um, that are, you know, teaching related events like the strikes and the shortages and that sort of thing. And just really from talking with um, some of my peers and some other students um, who are planning to be teachers or who plan to be teachers, but are no longer pursuing teaching um, is that, I don't know, I, I've, I'm having a lot of doubts, I guess, um, and a lot of concerns about whether full-time teaching is for me because I've heard because um, I knew teaching would be hard going into it, but I, I guess I didn't realize how much kind of unpaid and kind of like extra work that you have to do outside of teaching, especially like after you finish, um, you know, at like 3 p.m. for the day, I guess. And I, I don't know. I don't know how to say this in like a way that's kind of concise, but I guess my main point is that I... I'm not like totally sold on, oh, that's a really bad way to say it. I'm not like, it, I'm not kind of sure if full-time teaching is for me, I guess. Um, or, um, yeah, yeah, that's basically it. I don't want to go on too much. No, that's right. Can I, can I just, um, before we jump into the teachers, can I just want to, I just wanted to reassure you, like you, you don't have to apologize or anything like that. It is perfectly legitimate like with any career, but obviously we're talking about teaching today. It's perfectly legitimate to, you know, think, look, I've, I've heard all these stories about teachers who burn out and, you know, it's underpaid and there's a lot of work and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, yeah. that's just, yeah, I just wanted to say, like, obviously I should have mentioned this at the start, but this is obviously a safe space. Um, so you absolutely, so thank you for sharing that. Um, like you absolutely find it to, um, to share that. Just wanted to say that that it's perfectly fine to share, and it's a legitimate uh, question. 
So um, I've got my views on that, um, but obviously, you know, prefer to hear from our wonderful school teachers. And thank you, Brian, for asking that question. I think it's the sort of question that everyone thinks about, but people don't ask. So thank you for actually asking it. Um, I'll jump in on that one. Um, so I, between the three of us, like Sherlyn, Nadine and I, like I don't think any of us can tell you what you should decide for your own future, but what you've heard from the three of us speaking was that we, over time, learned how to develop, um, we learned how to set boundaries for ourselves and know when to balance um, like work and when to balance the rest of our lives. So it doesn't just come straight away. Um, and there have been times where I felt a bit burnt out as well, which uh, earlier I said that I had to get some counselling because I just thought this is this is the end. I can't do it anymore. I've been teaching for, what was it, a term. I can't, I can't deal. So it, it gets better um, with experience, but like I said, it, it's it's up to you. We can't decide that for you. Yeah, yeah, I totally understand and thank you. And I guess, um, yeah, what you guys have talked about, about kind of balancing work life, and I feel like that's important for teachers because I've, like, yeah, I feel like some teachers, like, they don't leave, like, school until, like, 5 p.m. or something because they've got, like, work to do after. Um, so I guess, yeah, it's just, I've, I don't know. I don't want to be like a pessimist because, um, I, to be honest, I just want to say that. Oh, sorry, I'm kind of taking away from everyone's time. Sorry if I'm doing that, but that um, is that when I kind of chose teaching as a career option um, because I was at another university for my career. Is that I, when I was a high school student, really I had te teaching was the only thing I had in mind because I, I thought that was clearly the only viable career that I had, like to kind of choose because I didn't know what else was out there and or I if I did I didn't know like what would be a kind of a, like a viable solid like career financially that sort of thing um and I don't know I guess this is more of a, like a personal thing that I have to work out for myself but yeah I've heard like stories about how you know full-time teachers like they quit in like the within the first five years of being a graduate and that and that terrifies me because I I don't know I just feel like burnout and um and things like and things like that or kind of overworking yourself to the point where your mental health declines that kind of that thought really terrifies me sorry i'm bring, sorry i'm totally bringing the mood down <laughs> you, you, yeah don't have to, don't um, have I can, to apologize i can add to a little bit as well um Please. like it i think i think any teacher would agree that 100 percent it's possible for it to take over um there is you know it's just reality that if I wrote a list of to-dos, um, I could possibly work 24 hours a day and never end. Um, so I think as an experienced teacher, you figure out which bits don't have to get done. Mm -hmm. um, you figure out the corners to cut. And I'm not saying, you know, the important corners you don't cut, but it's just a reality that we will never get to the bottom of that list. Now that can feel overwhelming. And I think that is what often causes the burnout because you feel like you're just never getting everything done. But if you understand you're never going to get everything done, then it kind of helps you to deal with that in terms of your own mental health. Um, my, my bad is that I love it. So I can, if I let myself, I can sit and just work and work and work because I, I really love it. So I have to stop myself a lot of the time. Um, but from colleagues and friends, um, definitely, you know, they, they feel like it's, um, it's tough and, and, and there is a lot to do, but at the same time, there's definitely teachers who do finish it three and off they go and um, I mean you know you get from it what you give I guess um, I definitely don't personally think it's a career that goes from nine till three um, uh, you know I work in a fairly you know high kind of pressure school I guess so my days more a bit more like I don't know a bit more like 7 30 till five most days probably um, but that's just uh, my reality in my job but um, I think I think it can be balanced. I think um, it's definitely something, uh, if you're not loving teaching, I think it would definitely be hard to commit that much time to it. Um, so I understand your concern and worry, but um, I think, yeah, I still love it. So. Totally. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. And, um, and I kind of really resonate with what Sherlyn said during her bit where she said she's a bit of a perfectionist. I'm also a bit of a perfectionist. So I feel like, like I feel like, I don't know, I constantly put a lot, like I, I put a lot of um, 
like I, I guess like a lot of pressure on myself to do well I mean even now like even with like assignments and that sort of thing um and I know it's kind of a really trivial thing to kind of worry about because obviously your grades don't kind of determine who you are um but yeah I feel like it's a skill that it's a something I'm trying to work on I'm just you know being kinder to myself basically but I feel like I'm just worried that that kind of carry through to when I become a teacher and then all the kind of demands that come from teaching whether it's you know, with parents or whether it's kind of carrying, um, you know, NAP plan results or HSC results or, you know, all that sort of like that kind of just piles on me. And like, I know that it's kind of like a, a reality that we, you know, we as adults, we have to bounce, we have to learn to bounce. Otherwise we just like, there's just no point to working because you just kind of burn out and frustrate yourself and that sort of thing. But I don't know, it, it really terrifies me, um, which yeah, I feel like also I keep saying how I'm scared. Like I like I am scared, but like I don't want to kind of seem like I'm whinging about it because that's a concern that all teachers have, I'd say. But yeah, I feel like like I don't know, just kind of reflecting on my personal circumstances. Like I I don't know if like full-time teaching's for me or if I should like fly off to another country to teach overseas, because that was something that I was considering before I started uni. Yeah. yeah. Um sorry if i can just add a few words from my end is that possible very quickly it, well, what, what i'll just quickly what i'll just quickly do is um for anyone who needs to jump off because i know um or for a couple of things for anyone who has to jump off because i'm conscious of the time um feel free just to like just pop in something in the chat just saying even if you just say bye or something like that um just pop that in and just get the screenshot for those of you who are GLP students who will be claiming this session for points. Um, just pop, just jump in the chat, right? You know, thank you, goodbye, whatever. Screenshot that. And then obviously, um, you know, if you need to jump off, you're welcome to. Um, this is a very valuable discussion. Um, so I will just start just with our three wonderful um, teachers, uh, GLP alumni teachers, I'm conscious of your time. Um, do we have another five? If you need to jump off, obviously that's totally cool. But do you have another five minutes or so just before we wrap up, if that's okay? Yeah, I'm happy to stay. I'm all good to stay around too. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, like literally, I think the first thing I said to them, like when before all of students jumped on, I'm like, don't worry, you'll be out of here by 1 p.m. And then, um, which is speaking of teachable moments for yeah. all of you, which is when you become teachers, no matter how well you plan a lesson, it's not going to go the way that you plan. I can guarantee you that. And it's not your fault. That's just the way that it's. Um, so what we'll do is, so, so thank you to the three of you. Um, uh, I can see a few people jumping off. Thank you. Um, uh, Tyree's already jumped off. He's popped on his email address there. If anyone needs to, jump, you know, ask questions about, hey, you know, career stuff, whatever, um, feel free to reach out to him. He genuinely is a very helpful person. Uh, if anyone wants to stick around, um, Rania is about to ask something. Rachel, I've got your question just here. I'm looking at that. We'll definitely pose that. Um, and then we'll stick around just for another uh, couple of minutes or so. Um, so sorry, Rania, do you want to jump in? Then Rachel will jump to your question. No worries. Um, just if, first of all, my question is about Master of Research for next year. But if I can discuss with you, Francis, on our own, that is definitely fine. But mm -hmm. The main point I want to give out is because I'm in the same situation as Brian and very quickly I did feel felt that so much to see during my placement and I saw teachers and I was doing casual teaching. I've been offered a part time teaching for contract because I split my units apart and I'm really concerned after that holiday how my workload will be. Now, like um, Neil, if I said your name right, sorry about that, you said about passion. Yes, everything goes back to passion. If you love your teaching and if you love the students, it will take over that. Like if you love playing, if you love hanging out with your friends, it won't matter about time or energy. Another thing is that the advice they have given, even without work, you have to meditate, reflect. That's what we've taught about uni and um, keep on doing well, do the best you can. And lastly, um, it's similar to uni, like how you're doing with workload and work and everything. It's going to be the same like for teaching, just in a new environment. That's how I try to take that mindset. I hope that advice was good for you because as a student, I really felt I saw myself in you and I was really down this year. It was horrible for me, but I decided to keep on going because I really love teaching. 
I wanted this to be quick advice for you, Brian. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. You're not alone. Thank you. It's glad to know that some people, like, it's sad to know I'm not, like, totally crazy. I'm, like, overthinking everything. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. You just voiced it out. Yeah. I can guarantee you, and I'm sure every every single teacher in the world has the, a, an example like this. There are at least, you know, either once a day or a few times a week, you mean, like, what I'm, on earth am I doing? Um, why am I a school teacher? But the positives far outweigh those kind of things. Um, yeah. Just, uh, we'll jump, so I'll just read out Rachel's question. Um, I'm about to finish my undergraduate degree and I'm considering doing a master of research next year, but I also have a potential job off of full-time teaching next year. Um, do you think that it would be possible to balance full-time teaching load with first year teaching? Um, if anyone has gone back to doing their masters, was it difficult to get back into the study habits later on um, in your teaching career? Just very quickly on that, Rachel, we'll jump in. Um, so I did, I did my master of teaching while also teaching. Um, at a school so I was a full-time well four out of five days a week teaching and then doing my degree full-time um and I'm about to do a second my master of educational leadership starting a little bit later this year while being a full-time school teacher so it's definitely possible um it'll really it'll happen if you wanted to basically like for example you, you'll have to give up a bit of time on weekends because in reality, like that's when you're going to have to, you know, that's when you'll be doing your assignments and all that kind of thing. Um, so it's definitely possible. Um, and I think as Nadine mentioned, you know, if, if you've got that drive and that love for learning, um, like it's definitely, I've done it and I'm about to do it again. It's definitely possible. Um, what I would also look out for just very quick before I throw over to the, to the alumni is another option is to start teaching and just, maybe just give yourself at least a semester just to take a deep breath and go into it. The other thing that you could do, so I know for a fact, because some of my colleagues in Canberra have done it, um, is so the University of Canberra offers essentially scholarships um, to study, I think it's a Master of Education or something like that. So the other thing that might happen is you might you know, start teaching, you'll be in a school, and then you'll get an email from, you know, New South Wales Department of Education, HR kind of thing saying, hey, if anyone wants to, um, you know, if anyone wants to upskill, essentially, there are these uh, scholarship opportunities. So that might be the other thing that helps with that. Um, Sherlyn, Shanlina, or Nadine, did you want to jump in and ask, did you, do you want to jump in and add anything to that? Uh, yeah, I, I just there about masters. I came back to my masters um, yeah, later in my career. Um, I actually, and I've done a postgraduate certificate since then as well. Um, I I actually did a lot better in my masters and my postgraduate certificate than I did in my undergrad. Uh, I think uh, just a level of um, maturity helped, and I'd been teaching for a long time, so I had that experience to base things on and and um I think my undergraduate my mindset was just I've got to do this to do my career whereas once I was um older I was doing it because I really wanted to so um just because out of interest so that was that's for me um personally I would find it hard to balance first first year out full-time teaching with a full-time degree I'm thinking that's a full-time degree um mm. I even in my master's I did that and my postgrad I did that um, part-time so I did it one unit at a time um, you know it takes a long time but I just plotted along uh, the times when I had to do two units even that then stretched me so for me it was slow and steady and I got it I got there so yeah that's from personal experience but obviously it is possible clearly other people can balance it yeah exactly yeah but, it, but it, again, you know, going back to the point about you being, you know, superwoman. So like whether we can match you, Nadine, is another question, but we can try. <laughs> um, it just uh, as a last call, um, I know a few of you are still there. If, do we, if we have any last, in fact, just if any of you are thinking um, of any last questions, I'm going to keep an eye on the chat. Um, and then obviously just feel free to jump uh, off mute. Um, something that I really just want to emphasize very importantly, um, just speaking of, you know, those kind of things we've just been discussing, um, is please do make sure that you're looking after yourselves and each other. That is critically important. Any school teacher will, will tell you that. Um, as school teachers, we, um, we don't just sort of educate. Um, we're really also kind of like, well, we're almost as counselors at the same time. So we take mental health 
uh, obviously of ourselves, but of our students very seriously. So it, wearing my GLP advisor hat to all of you as GLP students, um, so kind of like teacher student sort of thing, um, please make sure I plead with you, please make sure that you're looking after yourselves. Please make sure that you're looking after each other. Um, Brian, all the stuff that you mentioned before, you are not, this goes to, for all of you, you are not in this alone, this being the journey of life, you are not in it alone. There are qualified and caring um, people at Macquarie University who are happy to support you. Um, if you wanted to reach out to them, all you have to do is, is if you jump onto Google, the quickest and easiest way is if you jump onto Google and type in MQ Wellbeing, the top link that comes up, jump onto that um, and you can basically reach out for support or if you have a friend or someone who you realize who's a Macquarie student who might need a bit of support, who might benefit from, from, from support, um, you're welcome to do that too. So please just make sure that you're looking after yourselves um, and please make sure that you're looking after each other too, just for those of you who are still on the call. Um, I'll just have one last look at the chat, um, a bunch of thank yous and all of that kind of thing, which is wonderful. Thank you to all of you for joining. Um, unless anyone, I mean, just um, take yourself off, off mute and, and jump on if you have a, a question, but I'll presume that that's it. Um, can I just say a very big sincere thank you to our three really remarkable I mean, it, it sounds like it, it's just saying this for the sake of being nice, but um, based on what you've heard today, um, based on the experiences of the, that they've shared um, and just the fact, you know, setting aside being subjective about it, like the actual fact of them, they are GLP alumni um, and they are school teachers. So they are extraordinary people who have given up their time um, to be with us here today. They are the very first speakers at as a part of the Alumni Achievers Network. So just a nice little... You know, it's kind of like, you know, um, was it Buzz Aldrin, who, the guy who first stepped on the moon? Like, you know, that kind of thing. So thank you so much to Shanlina, to Sherlin and to Nadine. I really, I really appreciate it as a GLP person putting this together. Um, but then also on behalf of all the students who themselves have shared their thank yous. Um, thank you so much. I'm just checking the chat. I can see something's popped up. I'm just another thank you from Lorraine. Um, so yeah, without any further ado, um, I've kept you 11 minutes longer than I promised to. So thank you so much again to the three of you for um, staying on also for that little bit longer. You are superstars. Um, please enjoy the rest of your holidays. And to all of you um, GLP students, you are the reason why we wake up in the morning. We're proud of you and we love working with you. So keep up the wonderful work. Um, without any further ado, I think have a wonderful afternoon, everyone.